inside an FPGA and I suggest starting with the DCM. Let's see what's inside. We find the DCM easily by sorting the components in the list window by their site. I select the DCM in the list window and click the magnifying glass with a red rectangle. Double-clicking the component, a new window opens. This is the component's internals. By the way, this is a Spartan 3E DCM. In the second toolbar, we click the pencil button. This allows changes in this window. Note that the editor will refuse to make this window writable unless the global mode is read-write. Another important button is the one marked with F. Clicking it reveals an attribute sub-window. Among others, we can view and change the parameters of clock FX and hence change the frequency. Now note the checkboxes. These allow changes in the other DCM attributes. For example, we can activate the divide by 2 attribute and run the DCM at half the frequency. Well, if you do this for real, make sure that the frequencies are still right for the operation mode it's still running under, or change them. And suppose I want to hold this DCM in reset. Easy in this case. Since the reset input is connected to a constant zero, all I have to do is to negate it. Now the DCM will see a constant reset high. In order to save the changes and close this window, click on this button. The tooltip is reassuring here. And if this was all fun, let's go for an IOB. Like before, I'm picking a component from the list and going right to it with the same magnifying glass. And double clicking. This happens to be an output pin. We're still with the Spartan 3E. The first nice thing is that I can verify that the register is indeed in the IOB. Truly, this can be checked in the pad report, but somehow I find this more convincing. Now let's play around a bit. We can change the output's polarity easily by negating the component's input. The drive strength and slew rate are also easy to change, which can be useful to check signal integrity issues. Several other manipulations are possible as well. And finally, let's look what's inside the slice. This is a Spartan 3E Slice L, which is a simplified slice. I warmly recommend to check out the full powered slice as well. Clicking on the button marked with F shows the slice's attributes, along with the lookup table's logic function. This function can be changed, of course. It's also possible to change the internal signal routing. For example, if I want to have the signal before the flip-flop, I'll click the gate and the line is now available as the Y port. Now let's close the slice's edit window and find the port from the outside. I do it simply by clicking at the ports and see the descriptions showing up as text at the bottom window. Once the port is found, click the Add button and type a name of a new net to create. Click OK and the net is now created and connected to the port. I'll show later how to connect this net to other components. And, by the way, if you click an empty slice and press the Add button, a new slice is created which can be edited to match your needs. Same goes for other logic components. Only watch out for one little bug. If you type a name and then click on the tabs, the name will vanish and return to some default. This can cause some confusion. One has to remember that since we're dealing with a last stage file, it's not going to survive the next place and route. To save all our changes, simply click the Save button. A somewhat discouraging message typically appears at the bottom, but this means that the NCD was saved OK. Now we need to create a bit file from this. This can turn out tricky with the ISC environment, so I use the command line interface here as well. 
The .ut file was generated last time a bit file was created and contains all the flags, so the bit file should be fine. And at this stage we continue with impact, as with any bit file created.